Welcome to the October 2021 Town Hall. We're thankful you all are here to learn more about the LMS transformation from CCLE to Bruin Learn. My name is Lucy Avitisian, and I'm the Associate Vice Chancellor and CIO here at UCLA and one of the program owners of the LMS transformation. Some housekeeping notes as we get started. Uh, please feel free to submit questions via the Q&A feature in Zoom. Questions will be answered live at the end of the today's town hall. Um, a copy of this presentation deck and a recording of this town hall will also be available on our website, the LMS Transformation website following this meeting. So today's agenda includes the following. A program status overview, faculty panel where we will discuss Bruin Learn with two faculty members currently in the fall pilot group, a Bruin Learn quick start guided tour, how to prepare for winter quarter in Bruin Learn, how to manage syllabi in Bruin Learn, next steps and upcoming activities, and we'll conclude the session with Q&A. I will now turn it over to my colleague Jeff Burke. I am Jeff Burke. I'm the other program owner. I am a professor in the theater department and um, happy to be here with you. I'm going to give a quick overview of the program status. We can go to the next slide. So here's where we are um, in the project timeline. So the, the team has completed the curriculum migration from CCLE to Brew and Learn. Um, all the faculty have access to the platform around uh, 5,700 winter uh, course shells have been created. And, and really this is a live connection um, between, the, uh, between the registrar system and Canvas. And then you see kind of laid out on here the, the rest of the progress that's planned with a series of go lives uh, followed by hyper care periods, which means that there's um, direct sort of hands-on support for faculty, instructors, and TAs as we progress with the program. We'll go on to the next slide. And in addition to that curriculum migration and the initial creation of the winter course shells, there are also um, over 165 courses that are live in Bruin Learn this fall. Um, you'll hear more about them uh, on and off over the course of the rest of the quarter, um, maybe a little bit today. And um, also there are over 9,000 students that are currently using the platform in those fall courses. Um, in addition to that, uh, in the, the background of the fall pilot activity are teaching and learning and training sessions and office hours that are also underway and continue as well. So talk just a bit in the next slide about what's next. So coming up next, and we'll return to this at the end of the town hall, is an on-campus and virtual Brew and Learn Day, or actually more than one, so two days at the end of the month. Uh, well, you'll have a chance to meet the team in person, get, uh, if you'd like, if you're on campus, um, or do it virtually if you're off campus, for additional training and course support opportunities. Um, over the, the course of the rest of the quarter, you'll also see new UCLA-specific documentation uh, for things like uh, grading and the transfer of grading from uh, Canvas to MyUCLA, how to create uh, TA sites or use the new section support in Canvas, um, handle cross-listing of courses, and, and so on. And um, as we proceed towards the winter quarter, we'll also be bringing on uh, new ed tech tools or, or LTIs. These are plugins for Canvas, uh, like Kaltura, uh, Zoom has a plugin and, and so on. And uh, linked at the bottom, I think is something that might be of interest for faculty or staff um, across the campus, which is a, a list of what those tools are and what tools have been requested and are still under review. And then uh, we'll also be rolling out a set of usage reports for the individual academic units that will help them to get a sense of um, how the process of onboarding courses and faculty uh, onto the new platform is going. Uh, we can head to the next slide. And so just to highlight uh, really what we want to emphasize in, in a practical way uh, where we are for faculty is we really would like faculty to be logging into Bruin Learn now to figure out where it is, how to get to it, how to see the migrated material uh, that might be in there from your past courses, then to um, attend a training course or go to some office hours, uh, read material on your own as we get into November and closer to the winter quarter, and then start building courses or testing uh, functionality that might already be in your migrated courses by the middle of the month, uh, reaching out to the team uh, if you have questions or uh, there's a lot of self-service resources uh, on the web as well. 
And then as we head into winter quarter and the first day of class to publish the course in Canvas and start offering it. And, and as we go on sort of at the off the right hand side of the screen, the team is still gonna be here in that hyper care period to support faculty in a very hands-on way as the courses are offered in the winter. Um, so with that, we can go on to the next slide and I'll introduce uh, Brendan, who's going to uh, moderate a faculty panel here about some of the experience from the fall pilot. All right, thank you, Jeff. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Brendan Lake. I am an instructional designer with the LMS Transformation Project. Uh, next up for this town hall, we wanted to share some real stories about the Brew and Learn experience from instructors in our fall pilot. Uh, and I have the privilege of introducing the two faculty in our pilot, uh, our panel, Dr. Gigi Johnson and Dr. Magna Tarnowska Sinel, to answer a few questions. And first, I'll read their bios. Dr. Gigi Johnson has returned on recall after 22 years of teaching about digital disruption and creative systems change with the Herb Alpert School of Music since 2010 and UCLA Anderson since 1999. She continues her industry innovation work outside of UCLA at the Marimel Institute Center for Creative Futures and at Amplify Music. Gigi was the founding executive director of the UCLA Center for Music Innovation for five years. And Dr. Magdalena tarnowska Sinel is the director of the German language program and lecturer at the Department of European Languages and Transcultural Studies. Dr. tarnowska Sinel's fields of interest are inclusive pedagogy, social justice framework for teaching languages, travel literature, and cultural studies. Her research includes 19th, 20th, and 21st century German culture, literature, social history, and gender studies. She has also taught at the University of California, Irvine, University of California, Boulder, DePaul University in Indiana, University of Wyoming, Laramie, and Oklahoma University, Norman. Okay, now for the q and I have three questions for both of you, and we will start with uh, Gigi on this first question. What have you enjoyed about Brew and Learn so far, Gigi? I feel like I'm in a game show. Okay, and my <laughs> answer to my questions. Um, I tend to joke, I love 11 things. There's two things that I think need some figuring out, and I have one thing I'm, I'm right now figuring Let me start with one of the 11 things. I love, love, love the speed grader. After having lived in CCLE for so long um, and having to kind of hack through how to grade discussion boards and other things, this is like a dream. Um, I love that, and I love the fact that you guys preloaded my classes back to February of 2019 so I could go back and cherry pick things and just copy them in and not the big rigmarole we had forever in moving things over from CCLA. So those are two. And then um, I'm really appreciative of the model element. So I kept a lot of the model pieces where I had the students do a video of themselves to introduce themselves so they got to step into the platform. And I learned that some of the students evidently video themselves upside down, um, but it got them realizing and having a sense of humor about stepping into the space. I have more stuff, but I don't want to hog up the beginning of the conversation here. Thank you, Gigi. Yeah, I'm also a huge fan of the speed grader and kudos to Mark and the academic team uh, for some of those model items. Uh, Magda, same question. What have you enjoyed about Brew and Learn so far? Let's see. I believe you're on mute. <laughs> Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, well, I'm teaching an online asynchronous class in beginning German language and culture. And I had the advantage to work with Kim DeBacco, an instructional designer who really guided me through the process of developing the course site from scratch without templates. So it was great that I could um, develop in, in a way that I felt was most beneficial for, for students. So what I have enjoyed uh, the most within this context I would like to emphasize one thing. So um, while an online asynchronous class uh, is very inclusive in ways that an on-campus class cannot be because of uh, you know, students dealing with health issues, taking care of family members, have jobs, uh, you know, cannot afford housing close to campus and so forth, but it requires different modalities to facilitate interactions. And I especially enjoyed um, interacting with, with students and facilitating uh, these interactions. For example, creating collaborative um, uh, students study groups in which students can virtually um, interact with each other, work on projects, uh, they can upload videos. Um, and I also, it also allowed me to give students individualized video feedback which I felt was very good to really help students improve, but also uh, build a uh, community. Thank you very much, Magda. Um, for our next question, we'll start with Magda. Uh, which key features have you found to be especially helpful or impactful for your teaching? 
So um, in addition to uh, the relative ease with which students can interact with each other and the ability to create uh, the, the ability to create different uh, grading rubrics for different assignments were, was really a very helpful feature. And also the uh, now uh, famous speed grader <laughs> that's been mentioned already. Um, so that that's that's been uh, that's been that's been really good. Very good. And Gigi, uh, same question. Which features have you found especially helpful or impactful? Well, I'm going to say I'm going to talk about the speed grader for the third time. But <laughs> what's nice about it is um, it's very easy to see students who are behind and needing help. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate the fact that if something comes in late, a little icon comes up and it, it's color coded. So I'm not playing the where the heck is the late assignment game, which then helps me help students who are behind help them catch up. Um, it also is really helping me see what students have been in the platform and when they were last there easily without having to to wander down the, the rabbit hole to find it. So I can see the student who's at least in the space, working in this space. So that's been appreciated. I'm hoping that I will be greatly appreciating the peer assessments this week. Um, everyone has things due uh, tomorrow and the workshop in CCLE would make me want to cry most of the time and having to move everybody over in lockstep. And I'm really hoping this works really well. So uh, Magdalena, hopefully you've had great experience with that so far. And I'm hoping that works without a bunch of tears this week. I've got about 60 students peer reviewing for other students work uh, and in video. So this is a fingers crossed week for me. Very good. Yeah, I can definitely sympathize with that that moment in my teaching. Uh, last question, and we will start with Gigi. Uh, what are you looking forward to in the future about Brew and Learn? Um, I'm I'm looking forward to all my students being comfortable. So I asked at the beginning of the term how many people have been in Canvas before, and out of sixty, only ten had had the experience. So there's been a little bit of onboarding angst and people setting up their notifications, etc. So I'm looking forward to everybody getting comfortable and being comfortable and you know whether it's they set up the app for notifications on their phone instead of email or whatever it is that they fit it into their life well and get kind of comfortable in this space so i think most people have onboarded well um and and uh, i think that that will make me comfortable that they're comfortable because it's uh, I'm teaching also a, a asynchronous, but also possibly synchronous class, and folks are choosing their own adventure. And so it'd be nice if everybody was happily comfortable and this wasn't a tiny element of angst. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Gigi. Um, and Magda, uh, last question. What are you looking forward to in the future for Bruin Learn? Uh, so in terms of creating uh, content, CCLE, um, let us let us upload documents, links, uh, create assignments, and so forth. But Ruin Learn allows us to uh, uh, create something that much more resembles like a real um, website with multiple pages, which can be used in more creative ways than CCLE. So I definitely look forward to exploring this this more. But I must admit that it took some time uh, to familiarize myself with uh, the platform of, with uh, with things it can do. So um, yeah, that's a word of caution <laughs> for everybody to really get into this um, on time. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to, uh, to, to, to learning more uh, and exploring more. Fantastic. Yeah, that's, that's why we have a lot of resources available for winter faculty. Uh, thank you both for sharing can I, your success. Can I make one ways. more quick oh, thing please, though? Please, I just want to really say thank you for the hyper cares that Brendan's been my catch and release person helping me in the background. So he was able to take a look at the site before we opened it to students and go, huh, did you know there's a broken link checker? And did you know, and did you know? And that was really good. So I really recommend to folks that take advantage of the hyper care and have somebody be that angel on your shoulder looking at it going, oh, by the way, you should look at that before you open it up. So good resource. Thank you very much. That's very kind. Uh, thank you both for, for sharing your successes. Um, and that concludes this panel. And next up in the town hall, I believe we have Gail Sanford. Great, thanks for that panel presentation. I am Gail Sanford, the Bruin Learn Training Manager. And in this section, Ava and I will provide a quick start tour of Bruin Learn and a few things that you can do to start preparing course materials for the winter term. All right, to get started in Bruin Learn, you'll navigate to bruinlearn.ucla.edu and log in using your UCLA logon ID. 
One of the first things we recommend is customizing the notifications, as Gigi mentioned, um, to get oriented into the system and uh, receive the notifications you want, where you want, for your courses. Canvas includes a set of default preferences, and you can change the settings, and these settings will only apply to you. Uh, they do not control how course updates are sent to others. You can customize course activities, discussions, and scheduling notifications, and specify preferred contact me methods, such as uh, different emails. This is also a step that you can encourage students to do when they first log into Canvas, so they receive timely updates via their preferred contact methods. To customize notifications and settings, you'll click on the account tab or icon at the top left of the Bruin Learn uh, interface. Once you've logged in to Brew and Learn, the first thing you'll see is your dashboard. Each course is represented here by a course card and course cards are customizable. By default, the default uh, dashboard displays up to 20 courses and instructors will see two sections here, published and unpublished courses. Courses listed with the registrar um, will automatically populate to the dashboard in the unpublished section and refresh hourly. Courses and collaboration sites migrated from CCLE also appear under unpublished courses. To open a course, you'll click on a course card, and this provides course specific options such as syllabus, files, grades, and discussions. Please note that students will not be able to see the courses unless they are published. Next, Ava will discuss a few things to do in preparation of publishing those course materials. Hi everyone, my name is Ava Arndt and I am the academic team lead on the LMS project um, in which role I support Brendan and a bunch of other instructional designers and people who can help you get your course ready for winter. Um, so a few things you can do to get started right away is um, at first log in to Bruin Learn like Gail just described for you and take a look at your newly created courses course shells for winter, as well as your migrated material from CCLE Moodle, which will, as Gail mentioned, appear in unpublished courses. The second thing you can do is look at the help materials and all the resources we have in Bruin Learn Resources, where you will also find a schedule of drop-in hours and trainings that you can attend. Um, the third thing you can do is use the options I'll go over in the next slide to start building your course site for winter quarter. And lastly, we just wanna remind you that there we do have 24-7 um, Canvas help available. If you just click the help button on the left-hand side of your of any page in Canvas, you'll be able to live chat, talk on the phone with someone or send them an email. Um, and that's again, in addition to the drop-in hours at Bruin Learn Resources where my instructional designers are there ready to help you. Next slide. So there are really three ways to get going uh, working on your course for winter quarter. The first is, as I mentioned, look in your unpublished courses to find your migrated material from CCLE Moodle. All courses for the last two years have been migrated. We have formatted them with a template so they are pretty much ready to go to teach in winter should you pursue this option. You'll just simply need to do things like change the due dates, look over your assignments and perhaps um, add new TAs or change your bio or do an introductory video. The second option would be to start from scratch in Canvas and build your course site as you wish. Um, you have both, everyone has a sandbox site. And if you are teaching in winter, you should have already uh, an empty shell for your winter course site. You can start building in either one um, and you can engage an instructional designer for help or just go it on your own and use that as your course. The last option would be if you don't want, to, if you don't have the time to design um, your own course right now, we have some templates available in Canvas Commons um, that you can use to pull into your course shell and then simply add your materials. So assignments, um, lecture videos, content, reading um, to the pre-designed template. Next slide. And uh, the other thing we wanted to mention today is approaches to adding your syllabus to Canvas. Here you also have options. So if you are using your migrated course um, from CCLE Moodle, if you go to the syllabus page in the left-hand navigation bar in Canvas, you 
will have a pre-formatted um, syllabus template where you can add the information on office hours, your contact info, any sort of um, guidelines for the course, uh, due dates and grade distributions. Um, if you're making your own Canvas course or so starting from scratch, you would also go to that syllabus button, but it would be sort of a blank page where you can either cut and paste your syllabus that you have in a Word document or a Google Doc, or simply paste a link there. Okay. Great, so next we're gonna summarize some upcoming activities and then head into Q&A. So um, as we continue to set up the courses for winter 22, we're looking forward to supporting faculty in, in this transition. And you heard um, a bit about the favorite features and I was thinking about, I guess, my own, um, my own interest in SpeedGrader this last term. It's, it's been great to have access to these new features, but of course there are many questions um, and concerns. And so we would love to hear from faculty about specific um, issues or ideas that you have for your classes and um, would encourage you to take advantage of office hours and even the Q&A and chat now um, to get feedback and, and then the resources that are up on the Brew and Learn resources page. Coming up then at the, uh, at the end of the month on the 26th and 27th is Brew and Learn Day. Uh, when there is, uh, you'll hear more about this via Brew and Post and um, on social media as well, but there are opportunities to go to special trainings, uh, meet people in person, hear from some of the partner organizations uh, as well. And then of course you can uh, continue to visit the website as well as the Brew and Learn resources page to, to get more information. And so with that, we can head into the q and It looks like there are some already some uh, questions coming in. So we'll give, um, looks like Ava is, typing an answer to one, but we'll give folks a second to go ahead and type in any questions you might have. And we have a distinguished panel of folks here that can answer, um, including the two faculty. It'd be great to get questions for them and their experience as well, since they've been uh, willing to join us for the whole uh, town hall. So we'll give a, a quick second here. And Ava, you can answer live if you want. For Sure, yeah, sorry, I was trying to uh, pull up uh, some links, <laughs> I had to duo in. Um, so if uh, you your course did not migrate, get in touch with us. Um, you can go to Brunner Resources and, and send to any of the help emails um, and we will we'll, uh, help you out with that. Um, and as far, how do you sign into Brew and Learn? You will sign in with, uh, as you would sign into my UCLA by just going to the, the URL, which is linked in various places in these slides. Um, Non-staff have, have access to um, all the courses in their department. Um, your, your department or unit should have a designated lead who will have access to all the, the, the courses in the department. Um, and so depending on where, what unit you're in, you, that person will be able to see all the courses. And again, you can get in touch with us if you need help or you think a different person should be designated as who has admin over all the courses in your unit. Um, did I get everything so far? So far, I, I think so. Um, there's a question here about uh, browsing past syllabi. So Canvas, um, allows for syllabi to be set as public um, or institution visibility as well, independently of the course material. One of the things that we're talking through with the governance committees uh, now is whether or not we should automate that and try um, to have some automatic ways to make a syllabi available to the campus community. But for now, uh, we would encourage faculty to publish their, um, publish their syllabi um, even if they're keeping their course visible only to the students. And so we'll provide instructions on that, or you can uh, send a message to Slack or support for more information. But we are looking for a way uh, in the future to, to make more syllabi available to the campus community. Step-by-step uh, -step manual, that's a good question. There are a lot of different uh, resources and places to begin. Uh, I don't know if Ava or Gail, you wanna suggest uh, what we would recommend. 
Yeah, so if you go to Bruin Learn Resources, there's a bun there are a bunch of help materials there that can kind of walk you through um, some of the basics in Canvas, like what are modules, how to set them up, um, how to start working in building your course site. We also have a list of trainings um, that you can come to that have varying degrees of complexity. So we have a very basic overview. We have some more um, higher level things that you can do once you've had some basic experience or if you already know the platform. Um, so I would start there. And then again, feel free to contact us. We have designers that can walk you through things on a one-on-one -on -one basis if you would prefer that. And I'll, I'll go ahead and put that uh, link in the, in the Q&A here. We'll wait a little bit for a few more questions to come in. Okay. So there's a question here. I've heard people say that the new system is meant to monitor teaching in a way that CCLE didn't. Is that accurate? Or is the main function of Bruin Learn similar to CCLE? Um, I, I'm curious if there's others on the panel that have a different opinion, but you know, these are both learning management systems. And so the, the primary sort of intent is to present um, material to present material to students, support um, assignments and discussion and grading. And so I don't sort of know if there are other features that you would consider monitoring teaching. Um, so the, the short answer is that it's similar to CCLE in that respect, that it's a learning management system. Um, I don't know if anybody has a, a further answer, or if you wanna provide more information in terms of what you mean by monitor teaching, we can try to elaborate on that. All right, um, do you provide help during the winter break? It's a good question. Um, I think we realize that people will be working during the winter break. And so there are a number of different types of support. So first of all, um, Canvas or actually the, the um, company that um, provides Canvas called Instructure provides 24 seven uh, around the clock support that will be available um, via chat or phone or email for anything about the platform. And then um, that's also um, backed up by uh, support from ITS in terms of UCLA specific um, technical questions. I think the, the broader question or maybe reading a little bit between the lines in, in terms of are there, uh, is there instructional design support during that period? Um, it would be quite limited. Right, and so we're encouraging people to uh, work on their courses ahead of the winter break, and so there will be um, potentially some support, some support available, but it would be limited. And if everybody waits till the end, um, it's going to be very limited. And so I, I think we're encouraging folks to um, start working now, uh, pace yourself out over the quarter as best as possible, and then we'll also uh, do what we can to provide support during the winter break. And I would expect by um, Early November, we'll have a, a clear sort of plan that we can share in terms of what support will look like over the remaining part of the quarter ahead of the campus closure and then into the winter break. I don't know, Lucy, if you want to add anything. I think you covered it. Yep. Yeah. I was trying to get a link for the next question. What is the best way to receive updates outside of the town halls? We have a Slack channel, we have a website, we we have newsletters, so I'll, I'll post the, oh, Annalie's on it. Okay. Thank you, Annalie. Okay. Um, how long will CCLE be available while the new system is being stood up? The expectation is that CCLE uh, will be available into fall 22. Um, exactly at what point it's sunset uh, as this project concludes is, is not clear yet, but that's uh, essentially where it will be. We expect in the winter quarter, um, all courses in CCLE to be archived into an online archive that will continue to be available to allow you to access previous material from CCLE, anything even that hasn't been uh, already migrated to Bruin Learn. And so that's, that's the rough intent for the system. Um, Ava, do you wanna take the CCLE and question bank uh, quizzes? Yeah, yeah, that was my plan. Thank you. Um, so uh, it depends. The, the broad answer is, is likely no. 
if, if you had uh, quizzes and question banks in your CTLE Moodle site, that site has been migrated to Canvas. So if you look in your migrated courses, those quizzes and question banks should appear in the migrated sites to which they belong in CCLE, um, the, the, you know, the, the sister sites. Um, if you're starting a new quiz or question bank, you know, that would be a different thing. But again, I would encourage you if you have questions specifically about your course to come drop by office hours or contact one of our designers and we can help you with the particulars. But all of your content, everyone's content from the last two years has been moved. So you won't need to recreate things. You might move it around a little bit or, or do something slightly different, but you shouldn't have to create anything that you had already done. All right, we'll hold on here for more questions to come in. I believe the um, question about staff access was answered, so I'm going to close that. If you can, you can contact your local your local support, or if you know who the academic um, unit lead is, you can reach out to them. All right, uh, here's a question: Should our course content already be showing in Brew and Learn? So there's a couple different kinds of course content. Um, one is a migrated course. So if you had um, any courses from spring 2019 um, to spring 2021 in CCLE, you should see it in Brew and Learn now. If you have a course coming up in the winter and it is in the schedule of classes already, so it's with the registrar, you should see it there as well. Um, so if you don't and you're in the schedule of classes, you can reach out either to local support or to the Brew and Learn um, central support email and we can see what's going on. Um, one thing, if you are already in Brew and Learn and looking for it in the dashboard, that dashboard only shows um, 20 courses and you get to pick which 20. So there is a full course list. Um, and I think we can either put a link in the uh, a link in the chat here that shows how to find other courses that might not be on the dashboard in case that's the case. Um, but if you want to clarify the question about what type of course content it is, we can elaborate as well. Can I add another favorite thing while questions are coming up? Sure, that would be great. I really love the student view. So that um, previously, if something wasn't yet open, and you don't have to have everything open at the beginning of the quarter, you can have things roll in and roll out like in CCLE, but literally pushing student view, which is at the top of the page, you get a pink bar at the bottom screaming at you, you're in student view. So there's not the accident of, oh my gosh, my students can't see it. So being able to sort of scrub your own stuff, it's much easier and I have many fewer, oh crap, embarrassing moments. So I appreciate that. All right, um, let's see. I can take the quizzes. Go ahead. Um, so in regard to the recreating quizzes, there are some question types that don't map one-to-one -to, -one to Canvas, that's so true. The question is, um, can you cover the fact that quizzes have a difference in question types between CCLE and Bruin Learn, so quiz not, might not be 100% transferred correctly? Um, so that is accurate. Some of the question types are slightly different. Um, the main point is the content is there. If it's not appearing exactly as, as you would like it to appear, again, I would suggest coming to office hours or reaching out to an instructional designer and we can find um, help you figure out the best way to deliver the content or the quiz to your students. Um, I think the, the capacity of the quizzes is fairly similar if the question types might not exactly mirror what you had before. All right, so I'll put a link to the office hours and the response to that in, in a moment. Um, next question, will collaboration sites be migrated over to as well or do these need to be recreated? Um, so I think Gabriel's going to type maybe a more nuanced answer in there. The, the short answer is yes, they will be migrated. Um, one of the challenges is to decide exactly which account in um, Canvas they go to and where they show up. But if you're having trouble finding it, um, you could reach out either to local support or to us and, and locate the course. There are a few, I think, that are um, still being moved over uh, in a few units, but generally they're all migrated as well. Um, are office hours open to, to just faculty? Um, no, I don't think, I think anybody could show up. It's an open Zoom link. Um, I'll, I'll put that link um, 
in the chat. I don't know, Ava, if you want to say more about that. Yeah, no, anyone coming to office hours, please come. We're happy to talk to you. And I will add that right now we're not super busy because people have not gotten started on winter yet. So um, now is your time. We will, we're sitting there having our coffee or tea, hanging out, <laughs> come join us. <laughs> Probably that will change in the next few weeks. So you might wanna, if you do have the time now, show up while, while it's still, there's a lot of people around. Happy to have Magdalena or Gigi, if you want to fill time with favorite or unfavorite things, um, happy to talk about them here too, but we'll we'll keep this open for a little bit and see what other questions come in. I guess I'll comment on images. I, it's much more tempting and easy to put nice images with your site. It was not necessarily hard in CCLE, but there's a nice kind of preset vocabulary of UCLA pictures and you can have them sit gracefully at the top of a page with just a couple of clicks. So I would say my site looks slightly better than my old site. Um, and then I've ended up taking one of the wiki-ish pages and making a dashboard with actually buttons from canva.com. <laughs> and so every module has a cute little button, but I'm that person. You don't have to be that person, so. Um, all right, so I'm gonna suggest Magdalena and Gigi answer the question about SpeedGrader. Um, I, I think that would be great. I will answer the office hour one um, in the chat. Um, I can take the SpeedGrader. So uh, for the SpeedGrader, you don't have to go back to the list of students, but you have, uh, it just automatically rolls one student after another. And if you have the grading rubric set up, it makes it really easy. Just, you know, click a couple of clicks and, and, um, and you know how, how the student is graded. And after that, you also have an option of giving students a written feedback, video feedback, uh, or uh, just audio feedback, which is just wonderful. But speed grader, yes, it's pretty much <laughs> the, the, what it says. It makes the grading much faster. <laughs> and you can kind of slide between the areas easily so that you can drill down so you have a, a, one one version is you see the entire class and all the assignments and it's all color coded with it's what, blue if it's just come in or red if it's hasn't come in at all. Um, so you can drill down by student and then you can drill back up so it's very easy to come down by layers um, and just sit on a screen and see what's going on, make the changes and then the students see it immediately when you have submit and then you just kind of move through. And it works for discussion boards like a dream. All right, there's a question here. Uh, could you please give a quick summary of the grade submission process in the new system? Is it significantly different from CCLE? Um, I think if we can defer this one for another month, we'll probably be able to give you a very specific uh, explanation of the process. But the intent is that um, grades that are entered in Canvas would pass over to one of the My UCLA gradebook functions where you could review and submit them. There are some subtleties um, that we have to get through in terms of how that integration works. Um, if you have another more specific question, happy to try to answer that. So um, the grading process, the grading process in Canvas is a little bit different. It has different views of students, different ways of dealing with grades. Um, the folks on the call could probably talk a bit more about that, but the integration um, into my UCLA will be pretty straightforward. Um, Ava or anyone else, I don't know if you wanna elaborate. Sure, on. yeah, I mean, I was just gonna say, uh, the broad question too is the grade submission process the same? It will be fairly similar. I mean, I think actually in the future it will be improved and that there'll be an automatic, you know, pass back to um, the my UCLA grades. Right now for fall, the people who are in the fall pilot, it's gonna be a similar download and upload to, to my UCLA grades, which is what faculty largely do today, if, unless they keep all their grades in my UCLA. Um, the gradebook, as has been discussed here, has a slightly different interface, but it certainly is a functional gradebook and allows lots of things, some things that CCLE Moodle did not. Um, I have been told if this helps that the, inter the grade interface in SpeedGrader is somewhat akin to the grade interface in Turnitin. Um, in your ability to edit and click through the students and do your grading right there without having to go back to the gradebook to, to send your grades, so. All right, um, let's see. 
so to set up collaboration, do we need Office 365? I'm not sure I understand fully the question. There is um, Google, there's G Suite and Office 365 support. The G Suite uh, integration is already turned on. Um, if there's a more specific question or Ava, if you know how to answer that. I, I'm gonna guess this is because on the left-hand nav, uh, there's a, a link to Office 365. You don't need to do that. Um, that that's that's an option. Um, so it's not something that you you have to use. I don't know exactly what you're saying. What you want by collaboration from the question to set up collaboration, like what type of type of collaboration. But if we get some more detail, we can respond to that. Okay. It looks like Anneli is responding to where to provide feedback about your experience. Um, so requests for online tools, there is a specific, um, there's a specific page to view the, the currently requested and implemented tools and a button there that you can click to request tools. And that's really the way that we'll go um, straight to the team working on integrations and then feedback in general, we'll wait to see what Anneli writes, but there's um, Slack channel, email address, um, we're certainly also, especially for folks that are going through the fall pilot or starting to work on your winter courses, happy to meet and learn about your experience as well, if that uh, makes sense. Uh, does the non-UCLA support team provide Zoom support? It looks like Ava's going to answer that. So when you chat in Canvas, uh, for example, so you're in Bruin Learn, you go to the, the chat function and ask a question, they'll be able to answer questions about the platform. And if you were to ask a question about Zoom, you would probably get directed to UCLA support. So that ticket would show up um, with the UCLA support folks that could answer something specific to our environment. If you send an email to Bruin Learn support, they would be able to answer your Zoom questions as they're all part of the, the UCLA uh, team here. So hopefully that answers the, those questions. All right, will we still be using Zoom to record, convert, and embed videos in Bruin Learn? So the short answer is yes. Oh, hi, Pat. Um, short answer is yes, and they will uh, automatically go into Kaltura, and you can add them from Kaltura um, into Bruin Learn. So that's probably the easiest way to go from Zoom automatically into the platform. But of course, you could still use Zoom separately, download a video, and upload it. But uh, there's already a Kaltura integration. Does the non-UCLA support team provide Zoom support during the winter break? So the non-UCLA support team doesn't provide support for our Zoom instance. Well, let me be more specific. So the folks that support um, Canvas 24 seven do not support Zoom. They're just supporting that platform. Um, but Lucy maybe can answer how uh, Zoom support would work in general at ITS and what their hours are. Yeah, just to um, reiterate, so Canvas support 24 seven, this is the first primary tier for Canvas support, but when it comes to the inter, um, uh, other platforms, including Zoom, that will go through our COE or go through ITS support. Um, the ITS support will be uh, working during the holidays and we also have a third party that's been trained with our knowledge um, base to support our constituents um, after hours in the, in the middle of the night, if you have a question. And I should say that the Canvas chat is not a chat bot. You can go and talk to somebody live all the time, which is pretty helpful. I'm 
unfortunately we can't see if people are typing. So we'll leave it open for another minute or two here and see if there are any more questions. There we go. Um, looks like a repeat of the previous question. I'm just gonna make a quick Oh, comment. I see, um, I see the yes. word there, got it. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, Gigi. We'll answer that question, but go ahead, Gigi. I was just gonna say that the settings element is your friend and so if you're trying to figure out where and how something works go into settings and then it'll show you other options there's really one place to make most of the the big lever turns on your site but there's a place that you can turn off navigation items so if you want to focus everyone or just have the specific things you can do with the class you can turn stuff off so do go in and sort of tinker with you know, like like someone who gets into your new car and hits all the buttons go in and sort of see how things work but then go find the settings option and you can turn stuff off. All right, so I think now, now we understand the question. Um, so the, the non-UCLA support team, the 24 seven team from Instructure, I do not believe they provide video support. Uh, they do provide telephone support and that would continue to be available. So that's probably the closest to a Zoom call. Um, and then if you're looking for one-on-one, -on -one, um, sort of one-on-one -on -one Zoom sessions or office hour equivalents or instructional design feedback, it would be great to get those scheduled ahead of the winter break. Um, we're expecting some limited support of that kind, but again, if everybody waits till that, uh, that point in the quarter, uh, we would be really stretched in to try to accommodate the question. So probably there will be some uh, Zoom support, there will be telephone support um, and chat uh, on Canvas and normal email support as well. Um, but if you're looking for a Zoom session, I would try to get that in uh, ahead of the winter break. All right, um, question about Brew and Learn days. Gail, do you wanna offer a little bit more? Yeah, so we'll be in three locations on campus. Um, Ava's team of instructional designers and teaching and learning specialists, as well as some um, GTLAs. Um, in addition to training and communication teams, we'll be around um, at three different locations. We've got some swag, we've got um, laptops and iPads provided by IT services as well as library. Um, and just to drop by, um, come check us out. We'll be at Coral Tree Walk, Dick, uh, excuse me, Dixon Court North, um, as well as Courts of Sciences. So we'll be spread around um, just to come hands on um, with any questions you may have. We also have a training agenda plans um, with our partners at Instructure providing Canvas training specifically in regards to grading, using SpeedGrader, um, using the gradebook, we've got assignments and using the rich content editor, editor to really create um, and integrate media into your courses or your course materials. Um, and in addition to that, we've got a, a keynote and a panel presentations that will show partnerships that you can um, uh, have with our teaching and learning specialists and instructional designers as well. So I'm um, excited to showcase that. Um, and it is on Tuesday, the 26th, as well as Wednesday, the 27th, um, on campus and virtual sessions. More information will launch on the Alamance Transformation website, as well as um, be accessible from the Brew and Learn resources page um, within this week. So looking forward to that. Um, we'll also have digital signage to encourage your students and other colleagues to just get comfortable with the platform and um, just start conversations about uh, how to use it. Thanks, and I should um, mention, so GTLA is our, uh, those are our graduate student assistants that come from all different departments across campus and would be happy to meet with you and uh, talk about the needs of your courses. Um, I think the questions are largely being answered. One comment about Zoom screen sharing. I, I think this is probably back to the, the remote support. So the, the folks, um, not to plug the chat and telephone support too much, but the, that's our sort of 24 seven option. They will have access to be able to help you with your course material. So that even if they can't do a screen share, they can see what your course site looks like and help you from within that. So that, that'll often help them be more specific as well. Okay, we'll give one more minute here.
So in terms of, uh, so this sounds like feedback on the Canvas support. It would be, if, if you don't mind sending an email to our team, it would be great to learn a little bit more about your experience and, and maybe debug with uh, Instructor uh, how to make it uh, more friendly or refer you to somebody within the UCLA team that um, can support you directly. So I, I could see how that might be the case um, in supporting the platform. And, and we do have folks that are experienced getting faculty started um, on campus here as well. So happy to provide that as an alternative. Um, I will put the uh, I will put the email address for that in a response in just a second. Um, somebody want to take the question about attendance? I, I can take that one. Um, there are actually a few different ways to do that. Um, there is an attendance tool um, plugged into Canvas. Um, it should be an attendance option in the course menu. Um, other faculty might use a Canvas survey to use an exit ticket, or some use um, just like a Canvas quiz to mark that students have attended a certain session. Uh, feel free to attend office hours if you want to work through something with a support person. You can also do a graded or ungraded survey, which I found very helpful to kind of get here's where their headspace is at the end of this class and it takes attendance. So. Yeah, the ungraded assignments are nice to get things on people's calendars as well to sort of show up in their list of things to do, but not um, affect the grade. All right, I think we can head to wrap up. Uh, so we really appreciate all the questions. And um, there is, as I mentioned, we'll kind of keep referring you to the, the Brew and Learn Resources uh, website, uh, email address, Slack channel. There's people that are eager to hear how you're doing or what questions you have and, and provide support. Um, and then I just wanted to, again, thank uh, Magdalena and Gigi for joining us, um, talking about their work, as well as the folks from the LMS team that we're, we're here, and um, it was nice to have a, a big team effort in the, the presentation here. Um, well, one more question. Okay, in CCLE, the instructor can see all the correct answers in one page. Is it possible in Canvas? Um, is there somebody that can? The correct answers, I'm assuming this is to a quiz. Um, all the correct answers. Do you mean all the correct answers from all the students or all the correct answers in an individual quiz? There, there, there would be ways to do some of these things, um, but if you have more specific questions, you can type them now or we can set up a time to talk about, about, about quizzes. Um, in an individual quiz was the question. Uh, you should be able to look at the quiz if you go into edit mode and the correct answers will be highlighted in green as you have inputted them into the quiz. So you can see on the page all the answers that are correct. Um, and in any given student's quiz, you will also see red or green as you look down the quiz to see um, how they've done. I think we should go ahead and wrap up. If there are more questions about things like quizzes uh, or any of the other details here, I would encourage you to use the office hours um, or reach out to the team. That's a great way to have one-on-one -on -one conversations uh, with folks that know the platform. So thank you very much, everyone. And thanks again to everyone that participated in the town hall from uh, the panelist side. Uh, that was great. Uh, and we will see you all next month or at Bruin Learn Day or Bruin Learn Days um, at the end of the month, uh, maybe even in person. Thank you.